Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. Two of the best players in the United States of America facing off, I believe this was just a ladder match, but both players agreed one of the most intense matches they have ever played. Uh, referencing Cheezadelphia, which Future won, but they played dozens if not hundreds of times. Jon Snow, the Zerg, you've probably seen him a little bit before, ranked at the second best player in North America in 2018, behind Neeb, um, whereas Puck, I believe, was third or fourth, um, with Future maybe climbing up the rankings a little bit, partially because he kept beating Puck, and continues to, but that's a story for another day. So I'll, I'll describe a little bit of these players. <laughs> there you go. Uh, of their styles, because it's a bit of a clash. In the bottom left is Jon Snow from Psystorm Gaming, his team and sponsor. He is, he is more of a macro-focused Zerg player. That is a nice way to say not, not as great control in, in late-game scenarios. Sometimes can be a little inefficient, but as long as he's really focused on his drone count, making sure he has good scouting, he can pull through. Whereas on the other side, Puck is, is kind of the opposite. Uh, Puck can be a macro-focused player, but he's also a guy who's like, I'm opening up one base Colossus drop, and we're going to see what happens. So we will see how this game... It's, it's on Automaton. It's a Protoss versus Zerg. Now that's already weird, because Automaton is, is a, a slightly non-standard map. As in, the main base is technically closer to your opponent's main than the natural is, allowing uh, a lot of space. In, the main base itself is huge, but a lot of space and options for drops and warp-ins. There's a gold base in the middle that can technically be accessed by either side, but is of course very vulnerable. A lot of open space out on the map, but if you're able to get on one of the lanes, the way the map kind of feels is like it has lanes, where if you're going this way, over to the right side, and an army's on the left, it's very difficult to get them to engage each other. So that that kind of map, and especially one combined with a lot of drop or nidus or war prism potential, creates a lot of base trades as well. So I don't know what happens in this match, I just know it's worth watching. I'm already excited. Good. You can tell now they're friendly, but not friendly Merry enough Christmas to give away winter. a free win. It's going to be a classic star to Stargate from Puck. Probably a Phoenix into Oracle. Some players mix it up and go for the opposite, Oracle and Phoenix, but it's pretty rare. Behind this, Jon Snow opting for a quick third. He's got Zergling speed, but only mounting one out of three in gas to maximize the minerals. Make sure he gets the Queens and the drone count up. Overlord's on time. A few more Zerglings coming out. That's to just body block uh, and potentially catch any Adept to rest. I'm surprised Puck actually moved in here. Goes into the main. He might find an opportunity to kill a drone. Oh, he body blocks the drone, but Puck misses the shot and loses the Adept. He kills one. Already. Some some little micro tricks used there. Behind this, okay, Phoenix, Oracle. Now, what direction? If Puck does not take gases at his nat soon, he's looking for a third. Whereas, well, okay, he's taking them a little on the later side. Is it going to be a Twilight or a Robo? What's the call, Puck? Kind of surprised we haven't seen anything. Maybe he's going to go another Stargate. It's a little late for that. Kind of holding his cards close to his chest. You don't want to do it for too long. Is he queuing up another Oracle? What are, what are you going to spend your gas on? Sentries? The only thing that makes sense here is he's saving up for sentries. This is not a mistake. Oh, he's going to make another Oracle. Okay. I think this is partially a reaction to what he scouted. He saw that, uh, he did see the lair on the way, right? Yeah, sees the lair on the way. Not a huge swell of units coming across, some investment and creep spread. That means he is safe to take a third. The only thing the third base could be vulnerable to is a big swell of zerglings before he really has that many units of tech. So making the second oracle allows Puck to be aggressive with one oracle and have another one for defense as well without investing in a whole nother tech building as of yet. Robo is on the way behind it. The classic backstop. Two queens more than enough to drive away the little bit of harass the Phoenix and Oracle can do. 
Seven roaches. When Puck sees the... I mean, when Jon Snow sees the... Second Oracle. Is he really just gonna try to bust through? Because 11 roaches... Once, double digit roaches are a... Uh, well, yeah, he's going for it. The Queens! Brenda! We said we're gonna watch side by side like the Avengers trailer. What are you doing back there? I'm in the back because I'm the dark one. I'm the one who gets all moody and I have feelings for someone I can't have feelings for. Anyway, moving on. The roaches decide to push them out of the way. Would you guys walk on one side of the road? Now this is entirely for anti-air. Well, I mean, just a backstop here. Using those early defense and utility units, eventually they'll get here. This is all in. He's got 43 drones, lings, ravagers, no roach speed, no upgrades. It's all coming down to it. He's got a handful of force fields. Those can be broken down by the Ravagers. Will the Oracles activate here? Does he expect the Queens? Of course he does. Are we going to see a tag? No, he's just going to save the energy. Maybe get some Stasis Ward. Stasis Ward's going to be a big part of the defense. He needs to get him online as soon as possible. He's going to activate them. Make sure he can't slide around too easily. The Ling's already coming through to trigger those exact Stasis Wards. He might be able to get one. The Sentry's already under fire. The Corrosive Bow's coming through. Almost snipes off an Oracle there. A lot of army coming for Jon Snow. He knows how important it is to open up as much surface area as possible. The Shield Battery's coming up. The tech behind this. Immortals. 1-1. One, one, all in the mail and a long way from being delivered here for the Protoss player. The Stasis actually does surprisingly well. I thought he saw it. He might have been just slightly out of vision. A lot of the Lings are trapped in. Oracle's waiting for their opportunity to draw on some fire. The shield battery's at the back. Still a lot of energy on the sentries. The shield battery's coming back online as well. Good force fields to start. A lot of energy on the queens. Both these, neither of these armies can kill each other very quick unless they're massive corrosive bios. Or the oracles are allowed to do DPS for too long. Another round comes in. He's targeting down some of the roaches. He knows the queens are actually pinned to the south side. The corrosive bile gonna break some of the force field. The oracles will survive. Puck retreats up the ramp. Almost out of energy. Two immortals now. A hand, maybe one or two for No, no more force fields if you lose the sentries. More zealots being worked at the back. He needs meat shields. Another immortal coming out. It's almost done. Another oracle joining the field. The queens, lings, and ravagers are breaking through. The oracles stay on the line. Ten kills, nine kills on these immortals. The oracles doing their best. One will be taken out. The other's mostly out of energy. The queens are as well. Corrosive Bow's coming through. Another Oracle taken out. The other one badly bruised. It shields nearly down. But three Immortals, enough to drive this attack back. More links coming through. There is no Twilight Council. He invested in so many Oracles, he had to delay his tech. The Queen's eventually assassinated. But Ravagers and Lynx will continue through. John has no options here. He needs to do damage. He needs to kill the third or win the game. Those are the best options. If he can get a wrap around on top of the Lings, oh, not the Lings, the Zealots and the Immortals, then he can gun them down with Corrosive Bile. Also, the shields on the Nexus nearly gone. Already a round of Corrosive Bile is coming through. Knocks it down. Down goes the Nexus. I said that in like three different ways. It was very important. That's why. The Force Fields. He can break through. The Corrosive Bile going to knock down one of them. More Corrosive Bile's at the front. The Immortals trying to hold the line. The barriers are used. Most of the Lings are gone. The Oracle doing its best. Corrosive Bile going to be mostly dodged out. One will connect. Another one, the Immortal. He's down to two. How many Immortals have been lost in this match? He, he's lost two, so half his Immortals have survived. John continuing to try to break through, but Puck retreats behind his final wall. Another Oracle comes up using whatever tools he could possibly have. John tried to kill him. Puck, he, he took a beating. He bent, but he did not break. 59 probes. You probably should have calmed down on the probes a little, Puck. But no third. Whereas John now scrambling forward when it comes to the drone count. Nine, ten drones on the way and counting uh, overall. And taking the gold. Trying to use that map control he has with such a huge unit count. Obviously Puck not feeling comfortable moving out with the army he has at the moment. The unit's lost. Nearly even. A little bit more gas for Puck. And that mostly comes from the oracles and sentries being so expensive on that gas count. The archons are coming up, and Puck is is putting together. He's actually invested in double forge, which is quite expensive in this matchup, where you're really focusing on getting tech like storm as quickly as possible. But if it does pay off, 
then his army's gonna be very cost effective, especially against these mid game units. Like, barely upgraded Zerglings. So that's being taken out, another group. On the way, Archon spotted. Oracle's coming in, looking for an opportunity. Gonna notice the first thing is, is not that many drones here. The second thing is, why are you getting so much gas? Uh, uh, loses one. Is it gonna be both? Oh no. He was distracted a little by the Zerglings on the other side. It looks like John lost some of the Lings, but the Oracle is probably more important at this stage of the game. Phoenix comes in and scouts. The Lings get into the natural. And now, Puck, will we be losing a handful of. Well, okay. Yeah, he's gonna lose pros. There's no way he doesn't lose pros here, right? Oh, this is kind of awkward. Why are they still here? But Lings in the third. What? No! No! Ah! He nearly killed his own Nexus, which is bad. Um, pro tip more Lings in the natural. He actually bruised the Nexus a little bit. These Lings have been doing an incredible job. He's managed to pick off most of the workers he lost, uh, that Puck lost, were to those Lings in this last valley. Storm is on the way. No main Lings quite yet. No infestation pit for John. I, I think once Storm is out, he has to consider other options than just trying to bash down the front door. Uh, whether it be Swarm Hosts or Lurkers or... Ideally, Broodlords, but that he doesn't quite have the position to safely go Broodlords right now. The Immortal Count 4. We're going to see a Warp Prism right now. This makes, it makes a lot of sense, because as he's going for the Storm, and he's going to be trying to get a 4. One reliable tool for keeping a Zerg player back at home is a Warp Prism with a bunch of charge lines. Okay, didn't work. I was going to look real smart. I was banking on it, but sometimes doesn't happen. Occasionally. That Ravager took the wrong road. Never forget. Hallucinated Phoenix being used to scout this army coming up. Storm is done. Just walk right through with Storm. He's going to bully his way forward. He doesn't see the Banelings. The Banelings are the big kicker. They don't have speed yet, but plus two and speed are nearly completed. Then they can one-shot probes, two-shot Templar, and, and, well, you apply enough Banelings and anything will be gone. Enough Banelings. A lot of Banelings. Well, he's got 21. Six more. The hallucination usage is very important here. Some of the char- a lot of charge lots coming out. There's nothing to scout it. Uh, the storms here. Baneling speed. Sometimes Baneling speed can really throw a player off guard. Oh, beautiful storms. But another flank is coming in. Most of the Templar are gone. He still has seven more in reserve at the third. No fourth base going to be coming up for Puck. A lot of charge lots on the counterattack. Oh, the Storm's in the center mass of the Hydralisk. Can he get an Archon off here? He's going to body block out. Does have a couple more Storms at the back. Once again, Deja Vu, Jon Snow streaming through. Immortals and Archons, but the charge lots are on the fourth base. The drones are forced to evacuate. Reinforcements coming through. Immortals will trickle in behind the Assimilator. Trying to close the distance. The Storm going to drive everything back. The Immortals now have the confidence to push forward. The charge lots at the perfect timing, drawing Jon Snow back. He lost several drones. He's not going to lose the base, but having some pressure taken off him is going to give Puck a lot of leeway. He can rebuild the Templar, going to get some Archons. Plus three attack is nearly completed. Jon is working off of plus two melee attack and no ranged attack upgrades. So that means, essentially, if he doesn't have overwhelming numbers of Hydras and Ravagers and all that, then he's not going to be breaking through. If you don't have Lings and Banes in front to clear out the charge lots and tank some of the Immortal and Archon shots, you're going to have a bad day. No matter how much you think you have Storm, can be better. Plus one ranged attack. Is there going to be a, a more advanced tech transition from John? He's going for Overlord Speed. Baneling drops with plus two can be devastating, and Puck has lost a lot of workers this game. He's down to 54, which is still not an incredibly comfortable economy. One good Baneling drop. Oh. A dramatic pause. A parlay. We don't have time for that here. The creep is filling in around the sides. Gonna help out a lot, especially with the Hydras and Banes. Make it a lot easier to defend. Where are those Baneling drops? Where are you? Show me your secrets. I don't actually know where they are. Oh, 
Oh, well, speed isn't done. Very sad. Bring me my hover round. Okay. Also, Baneling drops on the Templar can be juicy as well. There's a lot of targets. He's going to open up some of the gold patches. Apparently only one of them. Nope. It's a little awkward. He knows where Puck is expanded. The drops are loaded, and they are dangerous. Dozens of probes could disappear in literally one single Baneling explosion. That's what... Well, at, actually, he's going to have plus two armor going on plus three. I don't actually know how the math works out on that. I think they still one-shot, but I'm less I'm less confident. Because um, usually it's, it's pretty rare where a Protoss player gets armor upgrades in a timely manner. So that's why this is a little bit of an odd game. Baneling drop trying to sneak in. There's another one up to towards the north. He actually changes directions. We're going to find out now. Oh, or not. Really want to know, though. I'd really love to find out. Nope. Still. Whoa. This one going deep in the paint. The chase continues. The third base is exposed. That overlord is taken out. Will any of these please give me one? The attack is coming in simultaneously. There's another nexus. Okay, they won't shot probes. Anyways. Another Nexus is actually part of a wall. He wants to mine the gold and minerals, get plenty of charge lots. He's holding both flanks. His blocking macro Nexus is going to be great here, but he's out of 37 probes. He's going to have to cancel the golden Nexus. John still with a full economy. There was no counterattack here to pull him back. Plenty of Templar. Both have two storms. That's got to be a little careful about being cost ineffective. 41 probes, he's rebuilding, and now, now finally John's like, okay. The only danger here is lo losing too much to Storm. Infestation Pit. Spire. Options for Hive, maybe even Mutas, or Swarm Host. All are, all are viable choices here. He's got all of the bases, and by that I mean he has like six. One, two, three, four. Yes, I can count. I learned how to count. I'm very good at that. Six more Dropper Lords were on the way as well. He could just go outright for the kill. Try to drop right on top of the Templar. Some Banelings potentially trick. Wow. Good luck getting through that. There's that four or five cannons. Going on five cannons. A handful of shield batteries. That's that's going to be a tough nut to crack. But uh, Dropper Lords are going to help out a little bit. Immortals and Archon still the most cost-efficient army he could have right now. How many Immortals are left? Three. He has plus three, plus three, plus one. These are much better upgraded than your normal Protoss army. The armor, now he doesn't have much that needs armor, but even the shield upgrades with full plus three against just plus two attack. Looks like the Charizards ate a lot of Banelings to the face, but they didn't mind. Unlike that Legacy of the Void trailer. The Dropper Lord's trying to come in. John is closing in. The storms have to be perfect. The Archon positioning, immaculate. The force field's incredible. He's trying to dodge the storms with the Overlords. He should probably add some Hydraling Bane into the mix, and he does. The Archon's creating a, a energy shield, essentially. The Baneling, the Baneling drops are closing in. Still more storms being used. Another round. Beautiful storms. He's holding the line. The drops all over the Templar. Devastating, incredible damage. Is there enough? to finish the job. Pretty much out of energy on the batteries. More storms, reserve Templar, join the fight. A new challenger approaches. Are there enough Hydras to break through? John, not quite yet. The Selecto Army Hockey looks like it was used. He needed everything at home. He gets another one of the Overlords. He's gonna drive the Hydraling Bane back. Oh, and John didn't start the Hive. He's just now starting it. If he had started it during that fight. Now, of course, like many of us, thought that was gonna be the closer but the storms the templar coming up from the back pretty much perfect our composition you couldn't take a better fight i mean he still lost a lot 15 templar have gone down most of them in that last fight but the lack of hive means puck has some time to rebuild looks like a few drones were lost either by well he does not want to deal with charge lots one dt comes in <laughs> there's no spore there still puck is Struggling, well, his natural is essentially mined out. There's 90 minerals left. So he doesn't really need more probes. He's doing a whole lot of not dying. But. It's still a long way from winning. 
This is an opportunity. The hive is not done yet. It's still Hydra Ling Bane. How much storm does he have? He has five Templar. They're all with the army. If they're gone, this is happening. Um, <laughs> Puck trying to expand to the right side. If Jon Snow lets Puck mine from another base for too long... I, there it is. The Greater Spire. The Closer. There is nothing... There is not the economy. He might have blank. He might have 3-3. Three, three, but on the economy Jon has compared to Puck... Brood lords. There's, there's, there's nothing that he can really do, barring John throwing away his whole army to storm. So, uh, no, he's gonna need to do more than that. Good storm. Bane Link's trying to trickle through a single zealot, the real MVP. The macro gold nexus comes up again. Six corruptors, two vipers. We've been dragged to tier three. John has it, hasn't yet scouted the base in the right side. On the right side. Whatever word is the best word. He's closing out all the options. He, he needs to... If he could kill that base, that could just end it. Well, not end it, but that's what he needs to do. He can't... Okay, now he scouts it. Yeah, go deal with that. Go deal with that, John. Looking for the flank. Templar's still very scary. The upgrade's incredible, remember. That's another factor. Oh, big storms. His base is exposed, but he bought a little bit of time. Can Puck actually hold this Nexus? John pulls back. He, he's very, very wary of losing his whole army right before Broodlords, which is the best way to lose while having Broodlords. Is he a Burrow? No Burrow. Adrenal Glands. Plus three. Attack on the way. What? Kind of a weird thing to reply to in the middle of a match. I don't no matter what the context was. And John loads up another drop. Uh, Puck only has 53 probes, but that means his army is, is close in value. He's being allowed to mine, and his defense has been incredible. Like, like I mentioned at the beginning of the game, Puck, the micro player, the micromancer, and John, the macro hammer. A lot less finesse, but a lot more units. Mainling drops are going out. I'm trying to take this roundabout path. There are a weird amount of necks on a screen at once. It's kind of surprising. The Mainling drop going to be shot down. Puck will block one edge of this. But in comes the spear. Now, using this little tiny pillar here, gonna make it even harder. If there isn't high ground vision, you might even be able to keep him from seeing the broodlords. Gonna get some abducts. Oh, he abducts the Templar, which allows them to storm the broods. I don't... I, a questionable decision. He brought the Templar closer. A lot more is on the way. Puck will hold. That was really kind of those uh, those vipers to help him close the, di the distance there. 103 army supply. He's got lings and hydras on the way, but Puck now has an army literally storming across the map. It's 3-3-1 three, three, upgrades against 3-2. Only attack upgrades. This base is gone. John still has a lot to work with. A couple hydras will deny some mining. It's kind of an awkward scenario. He can break through the rocks now that the minerals have been taken out. John going to split off a little bit with plus three and with uh, adrenal glands. Now, he's actually supply blocked because so many overlords have died. But here come the legs and veins. Puck! The Templar are gone! He's bitten off now more than he could chew on the creep. And down go all the Archons, the Templar, and the Immortals. They'll defend his base. But he lost all of his important units. More Templar were warped in. I don't know where they are. Do they have storms? No, they were just warped in. They're fresh. And there's no more K. Darren amulet upgrade. Rest in peace. But John John is down to 66 workers. Like, he needs to he needs to finish him. He needs to bring that hammer. Oh, this could help. Oh. oh my god, they don't die in one shot if they have plus three armor and plus one shields. Just barely. One HP. He's finally blocked it. Because there's not plus three attack. Puck doing so much with so little. The spine, he blinks into the spines. A bit of a questionable decision, but 
This base, that's a lot of the drones here. That's a lot of the drones. There's a uh, John's under 50 drones. Wait a second, is Puck doing it? He j Puck refused to break. Oh, he's gonna recall out the zealots. The rest of the army could be flanked, but... Oh. The Templar are forced to use their storms. Puck, well, John now has a deadly army supply. How many storms are left? That's what it comes down to. It's Hydraling Bane against the Gateway Templar. No immortals left. More Templar taking out some storms. He's gonna block it out. Even the uh, uh, Overlord's getting in on the action. Incredible storm. He's going for the throat. He wants to kill the probes. He will. Many of the probes are gonna go down with this, but the army stands strong. And also, he didn't kill that many probes. That plus three shields, plus one shields, plus three armor is actually really good. Super expensive. How many storms? There's one more storm. It's a big one. The lack of carapace upgrades are actually making this Zerg army so flimsy. He's cutting right through it. The Blink Stalker's incredibly cost effective. Plus three melee and plus three ranged attack, but he literally and figuratively cannot weather the storms. Five probes at a time, Billy. John has has been put in a very uncomfortable situation after it looked like he had what it what he needed to finish the job. The Protoss army is still around to Bane. Like, if there's no storm, there's the Protoss is dead. That's the way she goes. But there is. Wait, 64, 60 energy. He needs eight or nine more seconds. His base is gone. His base as well. The charge lots just pulling him apart. Unfortunately, the army caught in the center. This Hydra, the real MVP. Gonna kill a few more probes. Good luck, Zealots. They gotta take the long road. John down the 42 drowns. He has to build more overlords. You never want to build more overlords at this stage of the game. The army, like, the stalkers will blink forward. A bold move, but maybe the correct one. The storms covering the retreat. Mainlink's closing the distance. A big round of Zerglings taken out. The cannon's the backstop. Oh, he runs right through the storm. He, it's too late. Fuck. He's baited him in to the storms. And the cost effectiveness of that double upgrade Protoss comes through. I feel like it, it, so many times everybody's done that before. Everybody's done it. They've. It's like, well, why? Why isn't he leaving? He's dead. He's a dead. Protoss. Dead toss. Not a Protoss. A dead toss. Guess what? He ain't dead yet. He he bent and bent and how I don't know how many storms were cast. Um, let me see. I can actually see that. Puck cast. Fifty nine storms in that match. And most of them seem to be effective. And John, like, it's so close to breaking through. Need to break those bases earlier, but thank you to them for sending me that match. I'm sure John was kicking himself a little bit after that one. But Puck making it look good. You can, of course, check both of them on streaming pretty regular. And make sure to... I've gotten real lazy with this. Like, subscribe, retweet... Um, Kappas, give me a, give me a, what, what is it on Tumblr? Um, no, I forgot, T Tumblr's a Christian Minecraft server too now, so, never mind, take it back.